Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I want to talk about ground dirt, which is when you have an object and you want it to be dirty, but only on the bottom of it where it's near the floor. And I think a visual will probably make more sense than whatever I am currently talking about. So here's the visual. We have this metal monkey, and then we have this dirt that is creeping up from the bottom. Now, of course, when we do this, we don't want it to be animated, uh, but I'm just illustrating the point that I'm doing it procedurally, I'm going to show you how to do it procedurally, which means we can have control over what height uh, the dirt's going to be, and we can actually also control the quality of the dirt and all that. And of course, this also doesn't have to be dirt. It's just basically isolating the bottom of an object from the top and making it noisy. And you can do whatever you want with it. You can make it be dust or... And this, this doesn't even look like dirt. It's just brown. But okay, let's just start, I guess. Um, so we're going to open up Blender. And I'm going to make it full screen. need to remember that. That's the first thing to do. And we are going to start with a arbitrary object. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to delete everything. And let's start with a monkey because that is the uh, thing I started with in the example. And since I don't want it only to have like a beard of a dirt like I have going on, um, I want it to go not only on the chin, but on the, well, let me just rotate the object. So I'm going to rotate it like this. So this way the dirt is coming from here instead of only the chin. And we are going to put this at around, at around where the ground plane is, rotating it on the x-axis. Doesn't need to be perfect, but this will be a good place to start off. So we are going to use this monkey, give it some dirt, and before that, I just want to make it a bit uh, smoother. So let's do two subdivisions, apply, smooth shading, shading workspace. And this is where all the meat of this tutorial will take place. So we're going to make a material. And before we, you know, mess with the BSDFs and all that, we're just going to delete it and work on separating the bottom of the model from the top and then the BSDFs. So first of all, we need to have a way to talk about how high up on the model we are. And in this case, we are talking about how, ah, what? we're talking about how high up on the Z axis we are. So first of all, we're going to start with a geometry node and we're going to be using position. And this isn't the best approach to take, but we're gonna start with this and then do something that's even better. So this is the position of every point on the model. You can see it's dependent on where it is, it changes, which makes sense also with rotation and all that. And we are gonna take this, we are gonna separate it in its X, Y, Z components. So X, you know, uh, this is the X axis. Hopefully I can show that. I can show it here if I enable it, X, Y, Z. So along the X axis, Oh, it shows up here too. Uh, we have this gradient along the x-axis, then along the y-axis, and now the z-axis, which is what we want. If we add in a math node in between our separate and our material output, we can also control this. So you see I'm just sliding this around, and in some sense, we've separated bottom from top of the model. Okay, cool. Um, how do we take this and also make it noisy? make it look like dirt, make it look more random. Well, we are gonna be doing the age old trick of messing with the texture coordinates. So uh, before the adding, we are gonna put some noise. So shift A and then add some noise. You can do Musgrave, you can do wave texture, you can do, I don't care. I'm gonna be using noise texture. So we wanna mix this with our noise texture and I'm gonna do the vector approach instead of color, although in some sense they're identical. So we're gonna do vector, if I can type it, vector math, drop that in, and then we're gonna use the factor, or you can use the color. I hear that uh, color is better in some sense since it retains its X, Y, Z information instead of duplicating uh, the same information to all three channels, but that may be what you want. I'm gonna use color. Don't really need to explain why beyond that. And you can see that already something kind of strange is happening. And also it's kind of brought everything downwards, which means we need to correct for it to get it back up there. Uh, but we don't want to do that. And the way to fix this is you're going to add another vector math. And this time we are going to add in every component, I think negative 0.5. That does it. Um, as a quick explanation for why that works, somebody left a great comment below of uh, why that works and essentially we have these texture coordinates and then we're adding, we are adding this noise. And on average, okay, before we get to the on average, noise on each channel can be between zero and one. So at each point in our model, we are adding some number between zero and one and it's probably different for every point. But on average, since it's between zero and one, we are adding 0.5. So how do we undo that? Well, 
on average, what we have to do is subtract 0.5. Uh, if you don't care or don't understand, that's fine. Just do this vector math trick. Okay, cool. So now we have this kind of distorted version of what we did, but we can also control it because we have this noise texture node. What can we do? We can add detail. So let's zoom in. We can add detail, which gives us the nice crisp edge. Um, so this is kind of the difference between like some kinds of dirts and muds uh, depends on depending on what you want. I'm going to keep it on maximum. Uh, we can also distort this, which is going to make it wavy. I don't know why you'd want that, but maybe there's a reason. And then also, very importantly, we have scale, which is kind of the uh, the density of dirt, how much detail it's going to have at what scale, right? So here we have very small, very fine dirt. And at something near one, we have these very low frequency patterns. So usually you're probably gonna want something like, I don't know, something like this, which happens to be around nine. And again, this controls, this noise texture controls our you know, quality of dirt. And this addition over here on the math node controls our height, right? And something you might be concerned about, you're shaking, is that, uh, okay, we have dirt down here and it's kind of distorted, but it kind of, I mean, it's softer on the top, but you don't want it, the dirt to go all the way up there. You kind of want it to maybe level off over here. Well, we can also control that fall off by using, you know, RGB curves, by using color ramp is what we're gonna be doing. Add in a color ramp node. All you need to know is black, which is this first handle, represents the bottom in some sense. In this case, white represents the top, we can take this, the second handle, which is white, and bring it down. And you can see this kind of gives us more contrast, but more importantly, I'm going to just do this again. Notice the top of the model. It is becoming more and more white, which means less and less dirt. So this controls our fall off. And you can also do uh, change the interpolation you want. Uh, you could go constant if you want the extremely sharp edge. This is more of a cartoony effect, but there is a reason for this like if you want to have something like a hologram appear or I don't know I don't know what you do with that let's uh, bring it back to linear okay cool so we have this node that gives us a lot of control the height the fall off and the quality of our noise but uh, or the quality of our dirt but again this is dependent on position the geometry node which means if we move it uh, kind of Bad stuff happens, and you may think, fine, it's a stationary object, it's going to stay near the floor, who cares? Well, let's say you want to have it near the floor, but you just want to animate it sliding along the floor. I guess it doesn't actually matter, because I guess it's only z-axis dependent. But let's say, the, okay, let's say the scenario is you want to move it up and down, but you want it to retain the dirt. So it got dirty on the bottom, like a tennis ball that you left outside, but eventually you go pick it up, which means the dirt will still be there doesn't just disappear because it's no longer near the floor, not in this world. So what do we do? We need to make it not dependent on position. So instead we are gonna use some texture coordinates, same setup, but we're now gonna use generated coordinates, which stick to our model, so generated. Okay, fine. Um, those, that, those of you that are observant notice that something's a bit different and that is the bottom where the floor of the model is, is actually the chin. And this will be more obvious if we slide this. You see it's starting at the chin which is where the monkey was originally oriented, if you remember. Again, if we add a monkey, the bottom of it, you know, from the initial settings is to be the chin. So how do we update this to account for the fact that we rotated it? Well, since geometry, not what, since, um, since generated coordinates are dependent on the bounding box of the object, and the bounding box of the object was initially set at the beginning and we just rotated it, we need a way to reset the bounding box. And I think there is a way to view it in viewport display, wireframe, bounds. Yeah, there you go. This is the bounding box. You can see the bottom of this box in some sense is near the chin. Uh, the way we reorient this is just uh, F3 or spacebar, uh, whatever you need to do to open this window and type in its apply object transform. You see this updates our bounding box so that this is the bottom and now the floor is where we want it to be, which is the ground plane. But even better than all that, this now sticks to our object. It's no longer dependent, unlike the geometry nodes uh, position, which is dependent, uh, generated is not. So that is how you fix that. You can also use object, which is gonna move uh, everything either up or down by 0.5, we'll see in a sec. 
moved everything down, but um, this also retains the information also for rotation and all that. Um, and height and everything else still works the same way. Now, finally, I'm just gonna bring this back to generated, get rid of this. Um, basically, what we've created right here is just a mask. And again, this is the main bread and butter of the tutorial, how to make this mask, how to control it. Uh, but how do we make it kind of look like dirt or dust or whatever? Well, the general idea without going too much into it is we are gonna create two materials, not two materials, two BSDFs that we're gonna put in our material. You can think of it as two surface types or two materials, but this is all in the same uh, dirty boy material, okay? So what we need to do is create two BSDFs. We can have, we can have them both be principled, I guess. It's kind of overkill, but that's fine. So we have two principled BSDFs and we are gonna mix them together. You can either do that by mixing or using, you know, Node Wrangler to do it faster. So this is a mix shader, mixing these two together. We're gonna put this in the surface without doing some weird stuff. We're gonna put this in the surface. And then for the mixing factor, basically saying, how do I mix these? Where should the first be? Where should the second be? We're gonna use this color ramp, which is the final output of our like mask generator thing that we made. Okay, so now you see that, you know, it just looks white, but that's because our principled BSDFs are the same. So let's make one brown. So this, you know, wait for this to load. So one of them is gonna be kind of this yellowish, orange, low value, brown, dirty thing, whatever you wanna call it. And then the other one's gonna be white, of course. This is kind of the opposite of what we want. So we can either uh, just switch these two. You can see we, if we switch these, when it updates, you see that this is now on the ground, or we can just keep it as is and then invert this result. It is effectively the same thing. Let's wait for that. Okay. And then for this uh, dirt, we can have it be, okay, it's brown. It should also be very rough, not very reflective. And you could add a bit of noise. I don't know. Not important for this tutorial. We don't need to actually make it look like dirt. And then for the other one, let's make it metallic. Let's make it very shiny, like in the example. And let's switch over. Let's switch over to cycles, because that's how I rendered the first one. And let's also put some HDRI environment in here. Where is the world nodes? Uh, we are gonna add an HDRI. Again, you've already learned how to make dirt, but how to make it look half decent and to show that it works. Okay, uh, film, transparent. We can't see it, any see it anymore. And you can see that this has this nice separation where the top is shiny, the bottom is dirty, meaning it's not reflective. And of course, and of course my laptop is just steaming because I'm recording and using Blender with cycles at the same time. Uh, but of course we have control over everything, which will still update the mixture of these two materials. So we can still move this up and down, as you can see and we can still mess with the you know, scale of the noise and all that. Um, so is there anything left to do? Yes, we should probably group everything in here so we have one node to control the dirt. To do that, just select everything, including this inversion, everything that has to do with dirt, and also this. We're gonna hit Control G to put it in a group, group, and we need a bit more control over this group, so let's have control over the scale of the noise, maybe the detail of the noise, and then finally the addition over here, which is how high up it is. Okay, so now when we uh, kind of exit out of here, we have this one node group, which we can rename into, we can rename into dirt, and we can also make that the label, so that's what we see. There we go, now it's called dirt, and you can see all the information is in here, of course. You don't need me to talk about this, but, uh, we now have our dirt node, which basically has all our texture coordinate information, and we can change the height with this node. We can change the detail to make it low detail, high detail, scale, all that. And you can pick any two uh, BSDFs or materials that you want in here, and this will just be our mixing factor. So there you go. You now know how to make dirt. I have a Patreon. You can support me over there. See you guys.